back, math students. Welcome to lesson 17 in our ongoing series on philosophy and mathematics. Now that we know a little bit about how Bertrand Russell lived and acted in the world, what can we learn about his formal philosophizing? The first thing to know is that Russell led the British revolt against idealism. He disagreed with idealism, an approach to loving wisdom that is idealist allows that the mind or the intellect, as well as spiritual experience, are primary for our genuine understanding of reality. Idealists often hold that there is much about reality that is invisible to the senses, that there is spiritual, not just physical, reality, and that much of what is real is not necessarily accessible to logic, reason, or the five senses. Today, most people in Western society are materialists, empiricists, and rationalists. These days, it's most common to suppose that the truth is found through the experiences of concrete reality. We use our senses to uncover facts about the material world. We see, hear, touch, smell, and taste. We use instruments like microscopes, telescopes, thermometers, etc. to enhance our senses so that we can learn even more about the real world. Whatever we can't grasp empirically with the tools of science or through scientific inquiry, most people today are willing to toss out or dismiss. Following Descartes from our earlier investigations, we modern people apply our minds, our thinking substance, to material substance, what Descartes called extension. We make the world answer our questions using science and we master the world using the rational powers of our intellect. We make the world in accordance with our ambitions, our ideas, and our desires. However, this is quite opposite to the approach taken by idealist thinkers and seekers. People are sometimes said to be idealist philosophers if they hold that the world or reality exists not truly as matter, but as spirit or consciousness. What is primary isn't the physical, but the spiritual. And yes, says the idealist, there is spiritual reality. Spiritual reality isn't just a fiction we make up to comfort ourselves. Rather, spiritual reality is consciousness. It is ultimate reality. And consciousness pervades or goes through everything. Idealists often consider that abstract, universal principles and laws are more fundamental or important in reality than our sensory things. Whatever exists is most truly known in dimensions that are chiefly grasped and known mentally. Modern idealists say we know the most real things through and as ideas. However, ancient thinkers like Plato and Pythagoras know that ideas themselves are not the highest or most fundamental reality that there is an ineffable, indescribable, or inconceivable reality beyond all ideas, beyond all discursive thinking, beyond all thought, and beyond all being. The human intellect in pursuing wisdom is drawn by love towards this eternal source for all goodness, all truth, and all beauty. That's the ancient idealist perspective there. Descartes, as we have seen, had a foot in both worlds, the ancient and the modern. As a religious man and a mystic in search of eternal truth, Descartes felt his own existence in relation to God as the most important element in all his knowing. However, as a modern thinker, he was most concerned with knowing and mastering the things of the material world, both non-human and human nature. For Descartes, scientific and mathematical knowledge was primary because it finds out the facts of things. In coming to know the material facts of the world, we can master the world, and by applying our minds to the world through reason and logic, we can gain certain knowledge of the world in the realm of intelligible things, like math and geometry. However, Descartes' own scientific inquiries were inspired by a mystical vision he had one freezing night while meditating inside a stove. Descartes' knowing is therefore in some ways a bridge between ancient, intuitive, spiritual sorts of knowing on the one hand, and our modern, scientific, technological way of knowing on the other. Bertrand Russell, by contrast, has both his feet firmly planted in the modern world. 
Russell entirely rejects intuitive, spiritual, mystical, or non-rational ways of knowing. Russell rejects the idea that human beings can know anything besides what we are able to piece together empirically through our senses and scientific inquiry, or logically through reasoning and mathematics. Any other sorts of knowing that we claim to do are like pie in the sky. They aren't real knowledge. Most likely, they're just vestiges of superstition, ignorant or backward traditions, uncivilized nonsense, hallucinations, or outright lies. For Russell, all our genuine knowledge of the world is reducible to logic. Okay, today's philosophic experiments, folks. Question one, what do you think about idealism? Do you think there is a spiritual dimension to reality? What do you think it means to say reality is consciousness? How could that change the way we live? How important is logic and reason in your life? When you make decisions, how important is feeling or intuition to you? Does Russell's view of truth appeal to you? Explain. Would you rather speak more wisely than you live, or live more wisely than you speak? Why? And which do you think Russell exemplifies? All right, folks. I hope you enjoyed that lesson. A little bit difficult, but I imagine you can uh, you can handle it. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.